be live a two hour, the, probably the craziest science lesson you're ever going to participate in. Um, and we're going to examine the essence of things tonight. Uh, it's easy to examine the essence of the things that are in front of you. You can see them, you can touch them. But how do we understand the essence of things we can't see that are either too large like planets or too small like molecules? This is the kind of abstract thinking we hope to help you with this evening. By the time we're done with your brains on this stage, that came out weird. <laughs> By the time we're done with your brains tonight, we hope that you would look at something like an empty road box on the stage and realize that it's only empty because of the tiny swath of the electromagnetic spectrum we can all see with them. But if we could give ourselves superhero powers and widen that spectrum, we'd see it's far from empty. There are quintillions of molecules in it, neutrinos buzzing right through it every second, the components of air, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, water vapor, molecules all banging into each other. And me. And Michael Stevens. <laughs> But tonight, we are going to make some of them visible. And maybe even understandable. And that feeling you get when you actually understand something, where you go, oh, and you get an endorphin rush. Yeah, that pleasure of finding things out, that is brain candy. Okay, so let's talk about seeing the invisible. And we'll start with air. We look through air all the time, but how can we better understand? Well, the, the air in our theater has a little bit of mass to it. Notice our stage lights cast visible Beams. Well, we're doing that with a stage trick. We're just putting a, a bit of smoke into the air. Actually, this is not smoke. No. You see, smoke is a product of combustion. This is true. Yeah, and we are not allowed to start fires on this stage. No, that was my last show. <laughs> what is in the air tonight is simply aerosolized propylene glycol, or mineral oil. There's a machine called a hazer, hazer off stage right that just puts a bit of smoke in the air and it makes our lighting more dramatic. It allows our lighting designer to do cool things like this. Or this. Okay, how about this? No? Alright. We have, in the world there are dozens and sometimes I think even hundreds of different kinds of propylene glycol smokers, but this is uh, the best one. It happens to also be the one that I own. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces of industrial design. This is a film industry legend made by the Mole Richardson Film Company. It's called the Mole Fogger. Um, it is made entirely of Bakelite. Look at this thing, it's so beautiful. I actually own three of these, and if you have one, I wanna buy it. I have drawn a picture of exactly how this works for you on the other side so we can talk about it. First in the middle is a large vessel of propylene glycol. When I push upon this lever, it is a pump that pumps some of that glycol through a tube and around a big heating element where it gets turned into a fine mist by the expansion and the heating of the heating element and comes out of the nozzle as a little bit of special effect smoke. And I have to tell you, as a ah, special effects guy for 20 years, this smells to me like going to work. <laughs> so it's not smoke, it's liquid. Little itsy bitsy drops of liquid, but it's also one of the ways we discovered what our universe is made of. Yeah, do you guys remember about 112 years ago? <laughs> Man, tell me about it. Back then, everything was made out of... <laughs> I heard wood. Wood, that's a, yeah. That's a good guess. Um, but the answer we're looking for is atoms and molecules. Yeah. Now today, everything is still made of atoms and molecules, but the difference is that 112 years ago, no one had been able to prove it. And that blows my mind to think that you could go back then, just 100 years, and some of the most brilliant minds in physics would have denied that atoms were real. Ernst Mach, who studied sonic booms and gave us Mach speed numbers, denied that atoms were real. He said they, they're too small, We'll never find evidence that they exist. They're just convenient fictions. But then, in 1905, Albert Einstein started to think about the way dust dances in a stream of light. It moves with air currents, sure, but each little piece also jiggles around a little bit. Brownian motion. No one knew what caused this until Einstein asked, what if it's just being bombarded by these tiny molecules? Well, if they're big, 
Dust particles won't move very far between collisions, but if they're small, they will. So by doing the observations and the math, Einstein was able to figure out the size of molecules. Hmm. And those answers led to such great predictions that afterwards no one could deny that atoms were real. Of course, my favorite atom is right here. <laughs> oh, well thank you. Thank you. I did hear a couple of groans, and I'm gonna warn you that if that's a groaner for you, you're in trouble tonight. <laughs>